Do you think you'll get the weapons this year? Uh, we are going to uh, get the weapons delivered uh, from time to time. And if you look at when? the when do you yeah, think? if you look at the last four years, uh, we have received uh, weapons delivered uh, night times, and the United States has announced its weapon delivery to Taiwan. So we will get those weapons that we would need uh, in using those weapons for our self-defense. All right, Taiwan's foreign minister dead serious. He's confident the U.S. will come to the rescue in the growing tensions with China as he warns there's a risk of uncontrollable war. The communist nation using the largest show of force yet in his third day of drills. Senator Tom Cotton sits on the Senate Armed Relations Services Committee and is probably the most insightful person when it comes to China specifically. Senator, how serious should we take these drills as actual threats? Brian, we should always take China's drills around Taiwan seriously. It doesn't just degrade Taiwan's military readiness because they're diverting from operations and training and maintenance to uh, defend their island, but also as a way of kind of camouflaging or probing Taiwan's defenses and lulling the world into thinking, oh, it's just another drill, so that one day if they go for the jugular in Taiwan, uh, people may be slow to answer the bell. One thing I want to point out, too, is that Ch uh, Communist China's initial responses to Speaker McCarthy's meeting with President Tsai last week was fairly consistent with their historical practices. Then you had the French President Emmanuel Macron fly to China, take a bunch of French businessmen with him trying to hustle up business with the communists in China. And, and then President Macron basically said, well, if there were a war in Taiwan, we're not sure we need to be a part of that. We just leave Taiwan and the United States on their own. And then China begins to step up the intensity and the extent of their military operations. I think it's a very good example of how dictators like Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin respond to weakness and appeasement and signaling from Western leaders. That's one reason why it's so important that President Biden signal strength and resolve in defending Taiwan if China ever does go for the jugular. We did send a, uh, I think, a destroyer by one of their man-made Chinese man islands. So the Navy so acting somewhat boldly. But would you like to see some drills with South Korea and Japan uh, coordinating with us since they have no problem displaying how they would war game it out against Taiwan? Brian, right. I think military drills with our partners in South Korea and Japan against the common threats that we face from communist China are always appropriate. I think we also need to do more, not only help arm the Taiwanese defense forces, but also prepare them for a potential invasion. We have small contingents of Americans who have been training with the Taiwanese military for some time. I think we should substantially increase that training. We've seen, for instance, how much better the Ukrainian army became from 2014 to 2022 because we had small contingents of American troops training the Ukrainian uh, military to become more professional, more capable and more lethal. We should be doing the exact same thing with the Taiwan Defense Forces. And of course, the whole world knows how we trained them because it turns out since January, uh, intelligence has been leaking from our Pentagon of the way we've been spying, been able to uh, acquire the communications of Russia, find out how bad they're actually fighting, uh, be able to uh, possibly leak the plans Ukraine has for a surge in the spring. How damaging these, per these perceived leaks, how are they? How damaging have they been to the Pentagon and to U.S. security? Brian, the first point I want to make is it's hard for us in Congress to assess that because the administration once again is uh, hiding the ball from Congress. I'm on the Armed Services and the Intelligence Committee, as you mentioned. As of last night, I'm not aware of those committees being apprised of the source of these, potential source of these leaks, or for that matter, even the documents available. Now, I've seen some of them, as you probably have and others have on the Internet. But you would think that the administration would provide this information to Congress. It's just another example of their politicized approach to classified information or other sensitive documents. You know, we still don't know what they supposedly found at Mar-a-Lago or at Joe Biden's many mansions. Um, they're continuing to, to stonewall us on other inquiries. But second, it, even if these documents are authentic or, for that matter, even if they're altered or doctored, they tell a story that I, I've been making from the very beginning because I support Ukraine, but I don't support Joe Biden's Ukraine policy because he's been slow rolling our support to Ukraine. 
for over a year. We shouldn't be surprised that Ukraine may be running a little low on ammunition. But they've been telling us for a year they need more. They need more air defense systems. They need missiles that can destroy so or Russian firing positions just across the border in Russia. Now, I wouldn't take all this as gospel either. I mean, of course, our intelligence assessments a year ago of Ukraine's army uh, turned out to be significantly wrong when we said that Russia would roll over Ukraine. I think that Ukraine has a great shot at having a very successful spring offensive, but it's vital that we provide them rapidly mm -hmm. the weapons they need in that offensive, weapons that we should have been providing them at a much faster rate, much higher volume over the last year. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, they don't do that, and there's no Democratic push to do it right. They all want to go over and show up and say we support Ukraine, but they don't want to push the administration to do the right things. But on Saturday, U.S. officials and foreign allies began scrambling because this communication seems valid. Everything from Israel to South Korea, we still don't know how they got it, who leaked it, who the new Edward Snowden is, or did they just hack into computers? But this was on uh, Telegram, and it could have been put through the Russian system to make their casualties look less and maybe the uh, Ukrainians look uh, look uh, like it's greater. So, Senator, this, it's, it's unquantifiable how much damage this is. This story is percolating. This could really be big. Final thought? Yeah, Brian, you're right that it could be very damaging. Again, it's hard for Congress to make that assessment because uh, the administration continues to stonewall us. But we need to get to the bottom of, of who had access to these purported documents, how they could have leaked, what potential compromises they could be. But we also, again, need to have confidence that if we provide the Ukrainians the weapons right. that they've been uh, urging us uh, over the last year that they can defend their own territory. That's yeah. something that's been the case for the last year. Yeah. We should not be gloomy and doomy about the assessment in these documents. Right. Time is not on their side. Let them win. Uh, we trained them. Let them win. Uh, Senator Cotton, thanks so much.